The dimensions of the controller are 10 and a quarter inches tall, seven and a half inches deep, and 6.3 inches wide. Now, each controller is shipped with a mounting bracket. So if we look at the back here, you can see there are two different mounting locations for that bracket. On the bottom of the controller is where we have our connections. The RS-232 port is used for a barcode reader or to connect to a PC. We have the 25 pin IO port, the ethernet port to be able to communicate over a network, our driver cord connector, the power switch and the power supply plug connector. Now that we've seen the connection ports, let's go ahead and connect our screwdriver and look at how we actually set up the controller. Now when the unit is powered on, the operation screen is what appears first. So for us to get to the main menu, we just hit the icon in the upper left, and this is gonna bring us to the login screen. Here we can see the firmware version, information regarding the tool, and we can enter in the password. By default, the password is zero, and that's gonna bring us to our main menu, where we have the parameter tab, the remote tab, the monitoring tab, and the settings tab. Let's go ahead and hit the settings tab, and we'll go to time and date, and make sure that the controller is set to our current time zone. There's also the option screen where we can choose which language we'd like to use and the LCD brightness. Now, if we take a quick look at the other tabs, the remote tab allows us to be able to start the tool via the controller. And this is basically for testing if we want to look at a certain preset and also look at some of the output controls, we can do that through the controller. Once we have our system set up, we can go ahead and do a backup of that. We just hit backup. It's going to automatically save the backup. If at any time we wanted to do a restore, we just hit restore, select the backup and the system will go ahead and load that. Let's look at the monitoring tab. Here we have some functions that allow us to look at the last eight errors that were generated by the system. We can look at the current network settings. We have our input and output. And this helps with the communication to make sure that we have that wired correctly. As you can see, I have output three set to driver ready, output four is set to driver run. So we have those signals. And lastly, if we look at the graph function, this gives us the ability to graph a rundown we do have the ability to select two different types of channels to monitor. So we can look at, in this case, we're looking at torque and angle. And if I run the tool, the graph gets generated on the screen. Now, finally, we wanna look at the parameter menu and we want to go to the controller tab. Now there are a lot of settings in the controller tab, but we want to look at just a few here to get us up and running. So first let's go ahead and set our unit of measurement. There are seven different units that we can select. In this case, I will stay with Newton meters. Next, we wanna make sure that our tool is correct to make sure that the driver model is corresponding to the model that we have. And then I also want to highlight the auto speed or the auto RPM feature that is on by default. So you see that in the middle of the screen and this will automatically adjust the RPM based on the torque value that is selected. 
Now, if you want to override that, you certainly can. Just turn that off in the controller menu and in the preset setup, you will be able to enter in the RPM that you would like to use. And lastly, let's take a look at the operation screen. Now, what you see there is the value from the last operation. Uh, you'll see the time it took to run down in milliseconds, the total angle. We have our torque setting and our RPM speed. Now, if we want to change the preset, we can just tap on the preset area and we can select which preset we would like to use. We can also reach the monitoring menu by just clicking on the value and we can come in and again look at the operations within the monitoring tab. Now let's go ahead and look at how we can program a preset. First we want to go into the parameter tab and then click on fastening. There are two pages in the fastening menu. and when we want to deal with a certain preset, you'll see on the bottom of the screen, one of 15. This means we're dealing with preset one. If we want to change to another preset, just tap it, enter in the preset. So in this case, 15, and now we would be programming preset 15. All right, let's go ahead and move back to preset one. Now there are two strategies that we can use when we are implementing a preset. The first strategy is TCAM. The second is ACTM. TCAM stands for Torque Control with Angle Monitoring. So we can enter in a torque value and the system will run to that particular torque value. With the AM or Angle Monitoring, we can also monitor the amount of turn in the fastener. So in this example, our fastener will have two full revolutions or 720 degrees of rotation. This gives us another layer of error proofing that we could add to the assembly. So we could set a minimum turn of at least 600 degrees, a maximum of 800 degrees, and both conditions must be met for this to be considered a good rundown. The torque must be met as well as the angle or turn. Now both of these can be used independently. So we can set just a minimum angle or just a maximum angle. Now to enter in a specific torque value, tap on target torque and enter that value. In this case, we're entering 2.25 Newton meters. Next is going to be the torque limit percent. This will give you an error if there's a reading outside of that percentage. Next, let's look at the target speed or RPM. By default, the auto RPM speed is checked in the controller section of the parameter menu. So even if we did try to change the RPM, once we would go out and then return to that preset, you'll see that the original RPM will revert back to what is suggested for that particular torque value. Now, next is where we can set our minimum or maximum angle for the angle monitoring portion of the rundown. Now, if both of these values are left at zero, then the angle monitoring will be turned off. Now on the second page, we can look at the soft start feature. This allows the tool to ramp up to the RPM speed based on a time of milliseconds. So it can be anywhere from zero up to 300 milliseconds. While there are a number of different settings and parameters that can be set, I hope this gives you the ability to get things started with your system where you can know how to set it up and program a preset. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us at mountstorque.com.